Okay, so this is going to be a video introduction to how to do containerized development with iPlug2. And this is a new uh, thing that I've been working on. And it uses some of the features from GitHub, such as GitHub Actions and GitHub Code Spaces, uh, which are all quite new things. But what it's going to allow us to do is to build an audio plugin entirely in the cloud, um, just inside the browser. We're not going to be doing anything in Xcode or Visual Studio. Uh, and it's an extremely fast workflow, which um, I'm excited to demonstrate. So this stuff lives at a repository called iPlug2 OOS underneath the main iPlug2 organization. Um, and the OOS stands for out of source. And that's because um, unlike the traditional iPlug2 projects, this setup is, um, is an out of source setup. So you've got the iPlug2 repository as a sub module of this Git repository. And inside this folder here is the typical iPlug projects setup. Um, that's just a template though. We're going to rename it when we um, create our own version of this. So yeah, the um, this, this is a GitHub template repository. Um, you can see it says template there and we've got this big green button saying use this template. So the way you get started with um, with this stuff is you click here um, and that's going to let you create a copy of it in your personal GitHub. So I'm going to call it my new plugin. Now I've made one earlier so I'm going to call this my new plugin 2. So yeah, you just click that green button, give it a name, and once you've done that, um, it's starting from fresh. There's no history to do with the project that got cloned. So that's the difference between cloning and uh, using this template feature. Now, as I said, we're going to be doing all of this coding directly in the browser with GitHub Code Spaces. Um, so the way that you use this, if you're part of the GitHub Code Spaces beta, you'll get this now, but if not, you're going to have to wait a little while till it comes out of beta. But you click on this green button and select Open with Code Spaces. And um, currently I haven't got an active code space for this repository. Uh, so there's nothing here. So I need to click this button to create one. And um, when I do that, it will spend a few minutes creating this um, code space, uh, which I don't want to show you, so I've, I've done that already. So I'm going to switch over now to um, here, which is the ready-made setup. Um, and here, I've already got a, a code space created. Um, it's open in this tab. And as you can see, it looks just like Visual Studio Code. So once you've got this open, there is a script you can run, which is going to modify this template project, uh, rename it and give it the name that you want. So uh, it is called setup. So in this terminal window down here, I can type setup and then the um, the name of my new project, so my new plugin, and my manufacturer name. So this is similar to using the duplicate script in um, in the main iPlug2 repository. Now that's going to initialize the sub-module for iPlug2, and it's going to download the SDKs that we need, like the VST3 SDK. And it's also going to rename this folder, which should disappear any moment now.
Okay, so template project has now become my new plugin. And in there we've got our C++ source code for the audio plugin. And a cool thing about using um, Visual Studio Code here is that we get all the great um, IntelliSense stuff already set up for us. So Visual Studio Code has got really good code indexing, um, unlike some other IDEs. Anyway, this is uh, just a typical iPlug2 project folder. And there's a bunch of scripts inside this subfolder, including one called makedistweb.sh. And that is one which is going to build the web audio module version of our uh, plugin. And with this um, GitHub Code Spaces feature, uh, we've already got mscripting installed, which is the compiler that lets us convert C code into WebAssembly. So all we need to do is execute this script, and we could do that by navigating on the command line into that folder and running it. But I've set up a, um, a, Git, a Visual Studio Code task, so you can just press uh, Command Shift B, and it will execute that script with the right arguments. Okay, so it's built it, and um, it's running a web server inside this um, Visual Studio Code container, and it's forwarded the port which um, the web audio module is being served on. So if I click this now, it will open a new tab in Chrome, <clears throat> and hopefully we get our web audio module. There we go. So you won't hear this because I'm not um, sharing my audio, but it's just a volume control. Yep, that's working. So now um, maybe I want to change the background color of my plugin. Um, I can do that by changing this to something like color red. Of course, in reality, I'd want to customize this plugin lots more, maybe change a bit of the DSP down here. Um, and now I can kill that web server and run the script again to build it. This could be sped up a bit if I um, didn't build everything again. But that's now built it. And I just need to refresh this. Hopefully it should be red. Yes. So now I'm happy with my customization of this template. Um, and I want to publish it. So what I can do now there is, a, there is a script here called um, bump version and I have to give an argument to say whether I want to bump it in the minor version or the major version. I'm going to say bump version minor. I'm going to just uh, edit this change log. I could write anything here describing the, the changes that I'd made. So now I've edited the changelog, I'm going to say yes, I want to tag the version and push it to GitHub. So all of these files have been updated with a new version number. 
Uh, and of course, my .cpp file got changed when I um, customized the color. So now I could uh, just add a commit message. So what am I gonna say? Changed background color. Okay, so that has now tagged a um, version number and it's pushed it to GitHub. Now this ye yellow dot here indicates that the GitHub actions are running. We can click here to see them running. And there's two that are running. One is a action which is gonna build the web audio module, and that's gonna get published to my GitHub pages site for this repository. I have to enable that in a minute. The other action is building the native versions of the plugin. So that includes uh, audio unit and VST3 and standalone app for Mac and uh, standalone app and VST3 for Windows. So we can click there and uh, look at all of this uh, CI stuff. Now bear in mind that this is a public repository, so this stuff is all free. But if you want to make a private repository, then you're gonna get billed for the minutes. And um, it's 10 times more expensive to build on Mac, on a Mac uh, host than it is on a Windows one. Or maybe it's, 10 times more expensive than a Linux one, I can't quite remember. But because this is open source and public, this is all available for free. <clears throat> so let's see how the web um, build is doing. Still going. So this one, uh, the first time it runs, um, it's going to get in scripting, which takes a little while but that gets cached, so the following build, um, it'll be much quicker to build the web audio module. Three minutes normally doesn't take much longer. Okay, it's done it, and it's now creating a branch for the web audio module version. So we should have two branches now. And you can see this is the um, HTML, and there's some WebAssembly in here. So now I need to go and enable GitHub pages for this site. I need to select the gh-pages branch. Click save. Now that's gonna take a little while. Um, you have to wait a few minutes for GitHub to index the new pages. I'm gonna copy this URL um, and just add it here in the About section so that people can visit the web audio module version straight away. Mm -hmm. 
So that's now published at this URL. Hopefully you can see the audio is working, even if you can't hear anything. Okay, so that's the web audio module version. Uh, but we can see now as well that the native build has completed. So what that has done, it has created a release. It's a draft at the moment, but we've got the assets here, which include a DMG file for the Mac build and a zip file for the Windows build. So I can click edit here and I can just check all of this stuff is okay. Um, I might click publish. <clears throat> just to show you what we've got here, I'll just download the DMG file. Now by default, um, it doesn't do any code signing, so we might get a warning from the security settings about this when I click it. Yeah. So now I could go into my system preferences and say open anyway for this installer. Um, or I could make some adjustments to the CI scripts to code sign it. Um, but that's something that you need to do yourself because um, it involves setting certain secrets and things like that in the, in the CI scripts. But it's totally doable and not very hard. Um, so that is the end of the video. Uh, all of this stuff is documented on a in a um, Google Doc here. Um, so this describes the process using VS Code containers. Um, so you can do exactly the same thing as what I've done using GitHub Code Spaces, but using Visual Studio Code and Docker. Um, so yeah, if you're not on the GitHub Code Spaces beta, you can do that just with Visual Studio Code and Docker. So thanks for watching. Um, if you think this is cool and you'd like to support the development of iPlug2, please uh, sign up via GitHub sponsors. Um, so you can do that via the links here.